I just noticed, well, technically I, I, I had noticed before as well, that after you finish a meal, the way I have just finished my dinner, which was quite delicious by the way, but uh, getting back to the point, uh, after you finish your meal, you feel overheated. I mean, that's, especially to me, that's a bit absurd because I would rather expect to feel overheated after I finish, you know, a session of physical exertion, uh, exercise, not after a delicious, tasty, mouth-watering meal, uh, but that does occur. That is a physical phenomena. But why does that occur? Why do you feel warmer after you eat? Uh, and wh how does that have anything to do with this chemistry, this chemical topic uh, of enthalpy? Enthalpy is a curious thing, actually. Uh, uh, it has to do with, well, we know it has to do with elements and compounds. And primarily, enthalpy is nothing but, in more or less technical words, um, the change, uh, the change in energy. Energy is the big word over here because uh, the the entire science of studying energy transformations, energy transformations when a reaction occurs is nothing but enthalpy. Energy and enthalpy are, you can call it, two sides of the same coin. They go together. So getting back to the meal that I had, uh, well, I, it, was a, it was quite a complex meal. It consisted of salad. Um, it consisted of, um, well, well, how about this? Let me not give out too much details. Say it consisted of glucose. How about that? Let's keep things simple. I had C6H12O6, and that being uh, the molecular formula for glucose. And say I had um, a certain uh, mass of gl glucose, which say we call it X grams. Uh, plus, um, I added this to water. Um, and let's write down water and water was in liquid form uh, because you can only add you can only dissolve sugar in liquid and s say I had Y grams of water well that reacts um, and we have um, C6H12O6 dissolved and as you know if it's if any substance is dissolved it is uh, denoted by AQ, standing for aqueous. Um, that's A Q E O U S, aqueous. Uh, plus, uh, we have water again because it is dissolved in water. Now, something interesting happens. Um, well, even before this enters my stomach, uh, even even this physical change of glucose of solid glucose becoming aqueous glucose um, this physical change incurs uh, brings forth a change in the amount of energy uh, as we will continue further uh, in our um, video series which you might find like me pretty meandering sometimes we will we will understand how this compound over here has a certain a certain amount of inherent energy because as we know uh, matter is nothing but it's a compact pack of energy um, which which you may you may know or you might not um, you know Einstein came up with the fabulous and very insightful equation e equals mc square uh, which tells us nothing but mass is a packet of potential energy. Now, if mass is a packet of potential energy, and as Einstein said, if you accelerate 
any mass uh, at the speed of light, well, at, the, at, at double the speed of light, you get an enormous release of energy. Could you even imagine, say, I had energy equals, I had, say, uh, you know, two tablespoons of sugar. Uh, and 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 let's call, let's say each tablespoon being 0 0.5 grams. Two two so two tablespoons would be a one gram. A one gram of sugar. And if I accelerate and, and and if I was able to somehow um, have have a piece of technology that would allow me to accelerate that uh, at twice the speed of light and speed of light being uh, 3.0 times 10 to the power eight. Uh, and it's speed, so you know that speed is nothing but how many units of distance you cover in a unit of time. Over here, our distance being in meters, um, and our unit of time being seconds. So, uh, if you solve out the equation, oh, but oh my God, look at it! <laughs> you would probably be having three, um, three times ten to the power eight, and it would have been a square. Uh, because um, Einstein requires uh, the speed of light to be squared, and if it is squared, you 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 get an unfathomable amount, unfathomably large number. Um, it's it's about um, so it's three square would give you um, nine times um, uh, again using exponent laws. If you remember with exponent laws, if it's ten to the power eight, and if you're squaring that number. Um, then you would be having 9 times 10 to the power uh, 8 multiplied by 2 because uh, exponent laws state so in, in math we will uh, further understand exponent laws and how do they interact and that would be the amount of energy that would be released from 1 gram of sugar I mean that's just you know out of the earth that's unbelievable but that's what Einstein's equation proves. Uh, and if you further delve into Einstein's equations and how he derives that equation, um, there, and he uses very um, sound premises to arrive to that conclusion. So that is something valid, although we will cover that in, in later videos that I would have to do with physics and a uh, few, of the inter a few uh, interesting physical concepts brought up by Einstein. So we know that if you have any mass any mass of matter has energy, has inherent energy. Well, now the question is, you may ask, you may ask, well, if it does have inherent energy, then as we know, um, due to two laws, and the first law being law of conservation of mass law of conservation of mass and the second law being um, the law of conservation of well see well we talked about mass and what's the other side what's okay mass is one side of the coin what's the other side uh, you know uh, I'm, I'm basically alluding to Einstein's equation if you have mass that has to be conserved, you also have to have what conserved? You also ha would have to have energy conserved. Because hey, energy and mass are interchangeable. Because without energy, you wouldn't have any mass. Because energy, if you pack energy together, um, and, and, and we perceive that packet of energy as mass. So these two laws are, are I guess, I believe, okay, not I guess, are, are really the, f the fundamental uh, uh, guiding principles in enthalpy. So if we have to understand enthalpy, we must appreciate and recognize the significances of these two laws. And they're not hard to understand. Um, Now, if that is what enthalpy means, um, what are some of the defining principles of enthalpy? I mean, how do you measure enthalpy? How is it defined? How does it apply to our lives? Those are the concepts we will explore in uh, 
the upcoming videos. I hope you found this introduction uh, entertaining, <laughs> uh, and and I guess you'll um, you're interested in Entropy the way I am, and you'll come to terms with some intriguing ideas about Entropy and how it is so important in chemical reactions. So I will see you in the next video where we will talk about enthalpy to do with chemical reactions. And we will also uh, see few chemical reactions as well. Uh, and we will see chemical um, enthalpy calculations plus uh, different forms um, in which you could represent enthalpy. Uh, just the way if you had a math problem um, uh, you could represent an equation in different ways. Uh, with enthalpy, you could represent enthalpy in di in, in in multiple steps, in multiple um, um, I guess um, ways that follow a particular uh, ideology and paradigm. But let me not um, detain you longer. Uh, let's move on to our next video. Hopefully, you'll enjoy the next one as well. Thank you.